What's going on, YouTube? It's Unger to the Max here. A salute to you. So, just wanted to let you know that um, another episode of Talking UFC is coming up in the next couple weeks. It will probably be after UFC 234 would occur against Gastelum for the UFC middleweight belt. I don't think I'm going to watch that pay-per-view, though, because that main event just doesn't get me, like, excited, like, what? No. But like I always say, I never buy a pay-per-view just to specifically watch the main event. I always buy a pay-per-view so I can watch the whole card. But generally, I will buy a pay-per-view if I'm excited about the main event. So, wanted to give you that heads up. And also, in case you didn't know, um, don't know... I guess UFC 233 isn't going to happen. But anyway. Um, so the main two title fights are scheduled for UFC 235. First of all, John Jones, who just beat Alexander Gustafson at UFC 232. He will be defending the light heavyweight belt against Anthony Smith. Most likely in the main event. And then in the co-main event. For some reason, the UFC is skipping over Colby Covington again. I really don't know why. But instead of fighting uh, Colby Covington, who is the interim welterweight champion, Tyron Woodley will be defending the 170-pound belt, the welterweight belt, against the Nigerian nightmare, Kam Kamaru Usman. I'm not sure why they've skipped over... Colby Covington, I really don't know. So, we'll see. And then also, um, at UFC 237, Rose Namajunas, the UFC Women's Strawweight Champion, will de be defending her belt against Jessica Andraj, who last challenged for the belt against Joanna Jan Jacek at UFC 211, and Jan Jacek pretty much put on a clinic and dismantled her over five rounds. Um, but that's not the main reason I made that I am make, making this video. The main reason I'm making this video is to let you know that I've heard a report that the, that your Cleveland Browns, or our Cleveland Browns, I'll say it like that, are going to open the season on the road at Arizona on Monday Night Football. Yes, you heard that right. There is a report floating around that the Browns are going to open the season on the road at the Arizona Cardinals on Monday Night Football. Baker Mayfield against Josh Rosen. Cl uh, Freddie Kitchens against Cliff Kingsbury. Two new head coaches. One head coach started out as the Browns' running backs coach. Excuse me. Became the interim offensive coordinator. And now he's the head coach. And then the guy on the other side has no NFL coaching experience. Got hired right out of college. I think he was at Texas Tech. And now he's in the NFL. And Steve Wilkes, who was the Cardinals uh, head coach last season, is now the Browns defensive coordinator. And speaking of the Browns, I think I'm fine with them hiring Greg Will or uh Freddie Kitchens as the head coach. I think the offense really did well with him. But I think it was a mistake not keeping Greg Williams as around as the defensive coordinator. Although I can, I can understand it because he got promoted to interim uh, head coach. And the Browns performed well with him as interim head coach. So I'm not totally sold on Freddie Kitchens as the head coach yet. I'm not. I want to see a couple games first. Because I liked Greg Williams as the, as the head coach. We got some good wins against Atlanta, Carolina. But the biggest win of the season under Greg Williams was at Denver. So, I want to see... I Did they make a mistake getting rid of Greg Williams? I personally think the Browns did. But we'll see. As long as Steve Wilkes 
doesn't change the defense too much, I think we'll be okay. But, I think, even though the Browns have a decent group of wide receivers with um, Jarvis Landry, Rashad Perriman, Rashad Higgins, and Antonio Callaway, I still think the Browns need to draft another wide receiver because with a young quarterback like Baker Mayfield, I don't think there's such thing as giving him too many weapons. And I'm not sure you can full, I can fully trust Jarvis Landry as the number one wide receiver. I mean, yeah, he's big and physical, but there have been times throughout the season where I didn't know if he could be the number one court run, uh, wide receiver. So, do you draft a wide receiver like that, the wide receiver out of South Carolina? Or do you maybe try and see if the New York Giants would like to trade an Odell Beckham Jr.? I know that's a little bit of a stretch, but hey, you never know. Maybe the Giants would be interested in if you give them the the right package, maybe they'd be like, here you go, bye Odell. I mean, he has caused a lot of drama in San Francisco or in New York. I almost said in San Francisco. What the fuck? Um, yeah. So, what else? Oh yeah, I think Antonio Brown is going to end up with the San Francisco 49ers. Also, I saw something interesting yesterday. Le'Veon Bell is interested in signing with. This team, the Miami Dolphins. They, first off, they need to draft a new quarterback because Ryan H Tannehill can't get it done. He stinks. I mean, although he'll have some... It's weird with Tannehill. It seems like he'll have some games where he's, like, great and look like the, the franchise quarterback and other t times where he'll be like... <gasps> Where he'll go into hiding like that. And you can't find him. And you're like, where'd he go? I can't find him. I, Ryan Tannehill, I, I I, can't find you. So, he, I don't know. And also, I will be doing a um, Super Bowl live stream preview. Um, let me just say right now. If the Rams want to have any chance at winning this game, they've got to establish the run game with Gurley and Anderson early. The longer you keep Brady off the sidelines, the better. On the opening drive last year for in the Super Bowl, New England won the toss, um, which wasn't really a toss. It was more of just a flip. or It was supposed to be a coin flip. That was more of like a toss, which... There's not really a difference, but anyway. New England won the coin flip, or coin toss, whatever, who cares. Um, and elected to defer, and Philadelphia decided to take the ball. I think New England was thinking, oh, Nick Foles, he's never been in the Super Bowl before, so he'll be nervous and this and that. No, he led the Eagles d right down the field. That drive took about seven minutes. And even though the Eagles only got a field goal out of that, guess what? That was seven minutes that Brady and the Patriots offense wasn't on the field. And that benefits the Eagles defense. Which, um, they did not do a good job of getting to Brady. He could have, most of the night, he probably could have sat back there and drank a pina colada. I mean, yeah, in the closing moments of the fourth quarter to seal the victory... Um, the Eagles finally got to him and caused a fumble. But, if you remember, the reason the Giants beat the uh, Patriots in Super Bowl Forty Two, it was because there was constant pressure on Brady. It, and it wasn't always with blitzes. It was pass rush. Flat out. You had Strahan. You had Yuman Yara. Ozzy uh, Yuman Yara on that tackle. You would have guys like fake like they were going out and then come 
and then the Red Sea just opened, and they'd be like, oh, thanks, be and beeline to the quarterback. That's what the Rams need to do. Use Aaron Donald. Use um, Endowment Kinsune. Use Dante Fowler. Get to Tom Brady. If the Rams do not create pre do not create pressure on Tom Brady, they're in trouble because I don't trust their um to their backfield against these Patriots wide receivers. I don't. I mean Marcus Peters and Akeem Talib are great players, don't get me wrong, but I don't trust them against these Patriots wide receivers. I'm just being honest. So, the Rams need to get pressure on Tom Brady. But more importantly, they need to establish a run game with Gurley and with Anderson. Oh, and on the note of the Rams, the NFL is not going to um, change the ruling on that play, even though they should. It, to, they're going to keep it as a no-call, and so the Saints definitely got screwed, but the Chiefs got screwed too, because again, the Edelman play, that ball definitely touched him. I don't know how the refs missed it. Um, on the Hogan play, that was not a catch, but the refs said, yep, it's a catch. And that was the most, like, pathetic pa uh, roughing the passer call I've ever seen. Sometimes I wonder if the referees are showing favoritism towards the Patriots, even though it was on the road in Kansas City. I seriously wonder that sometimes. And... I know I've come out and admitted that I think Tom Brady is the GOAT, but I still question it. Because if Tom Brady is the GOAT, how come he's lost three Super Bowls? I mean, if you're the GOAT, are you... I mean, did Michael Jordan lost during the regular season, but I don't remember him losing in the NBA Finals. So, I'm not... Fully sold on the idea that Tom Brady is the goal is the goat. I'm not fully sold on it. Just saying. Has he led some great comebacks? Yes, I get that. He led a great comeback in uh, Kansas City last week. Although again, I think the Chiefs scored too quickly when there were about two minutes left on the clock. They scored, took the lead, but I was saying they left way too much time on the clock for Brady and. You saw what happened. So. Those are just my thoughts on the UFC and the NFL. And until next time, this is Unger to the Max with a salute and a signing off.